So in the end, when we consider, when we look at the most general model, the effect of what we've done is to allow the intercepts to differ, but require that the slope of the other independent variable, the x variable, be constrained to be the same across the groups. Okay, so the marginal effect of the A on somebody's earnings is the same regardless of your marital status and your gender. So the only thing that the W variable does is shift the intercept of the regression line up and down. In another case, we could allow for different slopes across the genders. So now we'll just have one W variable in order to keep things straight. And it's a zero for men and one for women. And so the now we include the W variable in its own right. And we also include the explanatory variable in its own right. But then we multiply the independent variable times the W variable element-wise. It's not an inner product, but it's an element-wise multiplication. So that uh, if you're if you're a woman, your observation is a woman, then your earning, your marginal earnings of an additional year of age get a little bit of extra boost. The derivative of y with respect to x for a woman is then beta 1 plus beta 2. The marginal effect of age for a man is just beta 1. So now we've allowed the intercepts to differ and the slopes to differ. But there's a little wrinkle here, and that is if we're going to allow both the intercepts and the slopes to differ, we might as well just run separate OLS models, no efficiency gain by dummying up both the slope and the intercept. If we had some other variables that we were measuring for both men and women, and which were not multiplied by the W variable, then there would be some gain in doing this, as distinct from estimating everybody by OLS. You have a somewhat more efficient estimator. Fortunately, in the next example, one doesn't see people do this too often anymore. At some point, <coughs> The proposition considered here actually found its way into some undergraduate statistics book, books. You may have, say, quarterly data. And one of the things that appeared in undergraduate statistics book many years ago was that you construct a single variable that represents the quarter of the year. So we could call it S. And S takes the value 1 if the observation corresponds to a first quarter, the value 2 if it corresponds to the second quarter, and 3 if it corresponds to the fourth quarter. And then we specify the model that we have uh, delta zero, which is the intercept, s times sigma, which is the supposed seasonal effect, and then x times beta is the explanatory variable. So once we substitute in for s, we can see the problem in doing it this way. The problem is that the shift, the quarter to quarter shift, differs across the quarters, the side of the magnitude of it. So the shift, if it's a third quarter, is three times as big as the shift that's for the first quarter. Okay, and so that creates uh, a problem for us. Instead, we should use three quarterly dummies so that the magnitude, the between quarter magnitude of the shift is always the same. Okay, so stay away from that business where instead of constructing a set of dummies, you're, you think you're going to get around it by constructing an index one, two, three, four for the quarters of the year. Yes. Excuse me. Yeah, because if it's not the first, second, or third, it must be the fourth quarter. What's sigma? Sigma is a regression coefficient. 